The Economy of Nigeria under President Bola Tinubu, 7 Facts In the past seven years, Nigeria's GDP growth averaged 1.1% as the country went through two recessions, the pandemic and its attendant effects which forced 133 million people to poverty, according to the National Office of Statistics. Nigeria's economy, which is Africa's largest, is struggling with widespread insecurity, shortages of cash, fuel, and power, and weak growth. Several economists have said that the nation's crisis have been compounded by multiple exchange rates, foreign exchange rationing, and the cost to government coffers of a $10 billion fuel subsidy in 2022. Subject to the authorities allowing the Naira to devalue and removing the oil subsidies, Nigeria's economic outlook is viewed as a glass half full. During the 2023 presidential election campaign, the current president, Bola Tinubu, made a number of positive statements regarding these economic issues. For example, he pledged to boost oil production, which is currently languishing around 1.39 million barrels per day, and also deal with oil theft, raising oil production in the country. However, there is hope for a better Nigerian economy in the nearest future if President Tinubu keeps to his words. At this point, you must be curious to have a clearer picture of how Nigeria's economy will be under Tinubu. And so in this video, we will be clarifying your thoughts with seven facts about the economy of Nigeria under Tinubu. Seven, the economy will have anti-austerity and counter-cyclical policies. As cited in his previous speeches, Tinubu always spoke against the adoption of austerity methods in the period of recession. Contrary to the advice of multilateral agencies, he always advised that Nigeria should not be shutting down government expenditure in downturn periods due to its further damages on the system. He further explained that Nigeria, since its independent, has been in economic turmoil as it has been struggling with economic depression with symptoms like high unemployment, high poverty rate, high level of illiteracy, high propensity to crime, and many more. Apparently alert by the country's situation, he seems to have assumed his new office with a sense of urgency to make a change and so, as a solution he advises that during a recession, governments should consider counter-cyclical policies, which will help the economy to lift out of the cycle of despair, rather than further deepen the misery of the people. Coming from Tinubu's mouth itself, there is an assurance that the level of misery in Nigeria will drop during his reign, thereby boosting the economy. 6. There will be a pursuit for full employment. Unlike the other candidates who spoke about enabling small and medium-sized enterprises, Tinubu was the only candidate who spoke about pursuing full employment as a strategy to boost the country's economy, which is a very key field. Defining full employment as a situation where unemployment is reduced to, say, 3% to 4%, it implies Tinubu's government will not sleep with a 33% unemployment rate. Therefore, sleepless nights will be spent to ensure that the government is creating an enabling environment to encourage employment in the private sector. With this, no entrepreneur for the sake of patriotism will have to take one additional staff than he needs. 5. There will be mass mobilization to save Nigeria from collapse. As a way to tackle the issue of insecurity in Nigeria, Tinubu, in one of his speeches, spoke about employing 50 million youths, which according to him is a way to reduce the source from which terrorists recruit new members. He went on to say that there is no way the insecurity problem in Nigeria could be solved, except the youths are massively mobilized to do the job. As President of the Republic, it implies he has the full grounds to implement this strategy and so, what should be expected in the nearest future is 10 or 15 million youths taken off the streets to solve the existential problem. That way, power can be handed back to the youths. With the ideology that the insight and experience of older people are useful at the level of politics, leadership, and wisdom, while the operationalized aspect of fixing the nation is fully a matter for the youths to tackle, Tinubu thinks that at least 500 teachers are needed to tackle the issue of 300 children out of school. And so he is ready to implement a social security system that takes children out of the streets and keeps them in school in order to take many young Nigerians to the job nationality. This is due to the fact that Nigeria needs millions of people taking care of and obsessing about their physical environment, thereby creating a reputation and new look for the nation through tree, grass, and flower planting and maintenance, creating a national task team around plastic pollution, new workers to boost the police, immigration, civil defense, the armed forces, and so on. He calls it a good and inevitable investment, which he is willing to pay for. 4. 
there won't be fiscal and narrow sovereignty. Severally, Tinubu has espoused that Nigeria doesn't have to sell crude oil, realize the dollars, and change back to Nero before paying the salaries of those who do tangible work, particularly in the public service. The new president believes that if Nigeria asserts the sovereignty of the Nero, they can easily employ those they need to employ to turn around their fortunes. He also believes that in a way to avoid inflation by printing more Nero to pay salaries, the youths should be engaged in the production of necessary goods. This way, dependence on foreign products and the constant search for the U.S. dollar will be reduced. 3. The economy will moderately be protected. Very much aware of the policies that have crippled the nation at least since 1986, Tinubu has specifically and severally mentioned in his colloquia that moderately closing the economy to the influx of imports is a necessity. That way, Nigeria can get a breather to organize herself and have the ability to produce what the citizens need. Once described as a fat grapefruit with little juice in it, Nigerians have constantly deluded themselves about the size of their gross domestic product, and so Tinubu has clearly stated what the developed nations do. He said, as the foreigners produce, they buy with the lifeblood of their unborn children, or with the likelihood that they may never exist, and if they do, they will be slaves and mere vessels to the smart races. He is disappointed at the fact that some other nations are organizing themselves while Nigeria is lagging behind, and so he is ready to make a change. 2. The income gap will be closed. Bolatinubu, in one of his conferences before taking the office of president, asked that the government runs the tax net to take control in the millions of rich Nigerians who are not used to the concept of paying taxes. He thinks the Nigerian elites have protected themselves for too long, thereby holding down the rest of the people. As president, Asawaju is targeting something larger for everyone's good. 1. Financialism Fully aware of the fact that the incursion of financial hawks into microfinance is what damaged the idea as a veritable way of helping the poor. Tinubu is also aware of the fact that financialism or financialization of the Nigerian economy is against its industrialization, which is due to the fact that Nigeria has a very large financial sector literally sitting on top the life of every other sector in the economy, and so there is need for serious reforms in the industry. As president, he is willing to refocus them on what really matters. If you enjoyed watching this video, please do not forget to leave a thumbs up, subscribe and become a member of our growing diverse community here on Think Rich Africa. Thanks for watching and see you in another interesting video.